Hello and welcome to another video of me doing things to this car. What we're going to be doing today is making DIY polyurethane engine mounts because the current ones are not great. If we take a look inside the engine bay, you will notice that there is no engine mount here. There is no engine mount there. There is no engine mount wherever it's meant to be in there. And there's also no engine mount. Well, you actually can't see. But if we look under the car, we can see there's a jack stand over on the right side uh, supporting the gearbox and the oil pan is resting on a wooden ramp. There is nothing actually connecting the engine to the chassis of the car at the moment, which is not ideal. So polyurethane engine mounts, why do I want to make them and why do I want to install them onto the Micra? At the moment, you might have seen in the previous videos, we have a big issue of the engine moving around the engine bay a lot which is not good. The power the engine is making is meant to go to the wheels and a lot of that is either delayed or lost in moving the engine, which we don't want. We want the power to go straight to the wheels. The current engine mounts, uh, which is, for example, this one right here, this is the engine side engine mount. You can very easily see how much play there is in this bushing, which is not great. Now, the main reason the engine is moving around so much is because of this one right here. This is the front engine mount which is meant to stop the engine from pivoting backwards. And if you take a closer look, it is not doing a great job at all. It is very worn out and there is a huge amount of play in this. So right here, I have the molds in which we're gonna pour the polyurethane and make our DIY bushings. For example, this one right here, it has a surround. It has a surround, a base, and a small plastic tube, which will sit in there. And then this got and then this goes around it just like that. We're gonna pour the polyurethane and once that's hardened, we're gonna have half a bushing. I have two identical molds such as this one. And once we have our two halves, that's gonna add up to one bushing because two halves equals one. What we're gonna do then is push one half in from this side, one half in from the other side, and we're gonna have a bushing inside the engine mount with also a small extension, which will fill in the gap between where the metal part ends and where it is mounted in the engine bay. So that's gonna create a very solid connection and we'll hopefully have very little to no play. Anyway, I'm not entirely sure how well I've explained that, but let's go ahead and start making these bushings. First, we need to prepare the actual molds to pour the polyurethane into. So I have here all the plastic pieces. I'm going to put a bit of grease on all the surfaces to prevent the actual bushing to, from sticking to this too much. Now, with all of those oiled up, we are going to get a bit of tape and just seal off the base because hopefully there's a small gap there and I don't want polyurethane to be leaking out through it. So, so with all of those fully prepared, it is now time to pour the polyurethane, which is a one-to-one -one mix. 150 mils of part A and we are now going to add the second part that's going to take us all the way up to 300. I'm now going to take this pencil and mix it all together and we're going to keep mixing it until it looks fairly consistent. Now I'm fairly happy with that but all of that mixing has got a good bit of air bubbles in the mixture if you take a closer look. So what we're going to do I have drilled a hole in the cap of this container we're gonna place that over under there and we are going to very professionally use this as a DIY vacuum chamber and hopefully pull most of those air bubbles out using this vacuum. Now, that hasn't really worked, but we're going to pour this polyurethane before it fully hardens. While we leave these to set overnight, we need to go ahead and get rid of this old bushing. And we're gonna do that by burning it.
We've burnt out the old bushing. I've cleaned the mount and painted it and here we have it right here. Now these two sleeves, the longer one is for the engine side engine mount itself and this shorter one is for the front engine mount. Which, speaking of, here we have it. So the bushings have set fairly well and I was able to press them into their actual mounts, the front engine mount and the transmission side mount. These two halves have also hardened. I've pressed them in together and also inserted the sleeve for that mount, which is exactly what we're gonna do now with this one. So it's gonna go right in there. And there we have it. That is the front engine mount all done. When I was designing the molds, I actually made sure to have the bushing turn out a bit bigger than the actual mount. What I mean by that is the diameter of this mount is actually 56 mils. I designed the molds to make 57 mil diameter bushings, which means when we press them into the 56 mil mount, it is going to be super, super tight. Also, these sleeves right here, I think they're about 17 mils across. So I designed that hole to be 16 mil, just so once again, it's nice and tight and it won't go anywhere. With that done and that done, we are going to make another one of these bushings. So those two halves there for this mount and these two donut shaped looking bushings, which are for the two bolts, which connect the lower engine support to the body of the car. And they are meant to have a bushing right here. This is what they used to have, but we're gonna recreate this out of polyurethane. All of these bushings have hardened enough to the point that we can take them out of the molds and press them into the mounts now. So we have this half and the other half. I'm going to slide the sleeve into one of the halves before inserting it into the actual mount here. And now the other half. It's been a few days, I've given the bushings plenty of time to fully harden and I think it's finally time to put them in. Now, although I've taken the rear engine mount out, I really don't think there's any point making a polyurethane one of that because these are really, really stiff compared to the stock ones. So I think this will be plenty and we might as well just put that back the way it is. So first up, we are going to lift the engine up off of the wooden block it's sitting on at the moment and fit the engine side engine mount into here. These side parts, as I was saying earlier, replace those bump stops and it's just gonna give us a very sturdy connection between the engine and the chassis. After that, we're gonna do the same thing over on the other side and fit the transmission mount. And lastly, we're gonna install this center brace, which carries the rear engine mount, the front engine mount and gets bolted in with these two bolts which we've made the bushings for. So I actually went ahead and did it the other way around. I have fitted the transmission mount, used a bit of soap to help it slip in and also used this block of wood and the hammer to really just hammer it in there because it was a very, very tight fit, but that is in. Next up is the engine side mount. This one too is fitted, all good. And I've gone ahead underneath the car and installed the center brace. You can see the stock rear engine mount back in its place. And just behind it here, we have the two bolts with the two new poly bushings we made. They seem to fit very good. And here at the front, we also have the front engine mount fitted. So let's see what effect do these new polyurethane engine mounts have on the car and how it drives. Although we can't really drive it, but we're still gonna try to test them. Something I was kind of worried about was uh, vibrations in the cabin, which surprisingly aren't really bad at all they're exactly the same as they were before and what <laughs> this what? shaking like <laughs> you did this before but yeah so the vibrations aren't too bad compared to the stock ones and these ones there really isn't much of a difference especially the fact that i now expect the car to drive properly instead of the engine moving around the engine bay constantly which speaking of So what I want to try is kind of lurch the car forward very suddenly and see how much the engine moves in the engine bay. Before it was really bad and the engine moved all over the place pulling the turbo pipe off the turbo because it wasn't clamped properly and it was not the best contraption. But let's give it a go and see what it's like. Now I'm going to do a kind of sudden launch-ish in my driveway.
So I've looked over the footage and obviously there is a bit of movement in the engine, but that's normal and good. Especially compared to before, it is way better and I'm very happy with the results. We now also have polyurethane engine mount bushings bragging rights, so we can say that's poly bushings, which is great. And we fixed the issue and overall I'm very happy. Yeah, what else is there to say? Not much. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one. The car is very close to being done and hopefully we'll have it on the road soon after three years of owning the car and just keeping it in my driveway doing stupid mods to it. Goodbye.